for now. Hey, everyone. Pastor Tim here, coming to you from the campus of Community of Grace Lutheran Church in Peoria, Arizona. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glad to have you joining us on our online campus, either on Facebook or on YouTube, and it's really good to have you with us no matter where you are. We're coming to you, as I mentioned, from Peoria, Arizona, another hot Arizona day. I think yesterday it was 108 degrees. It's going to be fairly similar to that. That's our story now, uh, probably through mid-December, but we're used to it here in Phoenix, and I hope you're having good weather where you are. Today we're continuing a series that we started a few weeks ago called Pushing the Reset Button on Your Life. And so far, so far, we've talked about pushing the reset button on your relationships, on your emotions, on your soul. And this week, we turn to endurance. These last 15, 16 months have pretty much taken it all out of us. And so we're going to talk about how to reboot, how to reset our endurance uh, by rooting ourselves in the grace of Jesus. So we're glad to have you with us as we talk about that today. But we're going to begin with some great music.
Well, once again, thanks for joining us for our online worship here at Community of Grace. So glad to have you with us. And if you're joining us for the first time or you've been online with us for a few weeks, uh, we have one, uh, a way for you to connect with us so that we can connect with you if you would like for us to do that. Uh, there's a phone number up on the screen, and you can text in several different words to that phone number, and we'll be able to respond to you. The number is 602-806-9406, 602-806-9406. If you text in the word new to that number, we're going to send you a card to Starbucks. And that's just our way of saying thanks. It's a small act of grace to let you know that we're here for you. Uh, and if we can do anything to serve you, we want to do that. If you've got a prayer request, text in the word prayer. And that way we can follow up and we will make sure that we get you on our prayer list. There are a lot of different people who will be praying for you throughout the week. And we would be honored to do that for you. And if you'd like to simply know more what's going on with Community of Grace, text the word events and we'll send you a link to various things happening. You can always go to boldrecklessgrace.org. That's boldrecklessgrace.org for all the information. And we have things going on uh, throughout the week online, and uh, there are some things that we've done in the past you might want to look at on our YouTube page or Facebook page. So we encourage you to get involved as, you, as much as you'd like to be. And again, if we can serve you in any way, please use that number to get a hold of us. Uh, I do want to take this opportunity, uh, as I do each week, to say thank you for being a very special kind of church, uh, a church that the world needs, a church that shares this amazing word of grace with a world that just so desperately needs it, uh, where there are so many conflicting views now of who Jesus is and who God is, who the church is. Thank you for being a church that says we are going to stand on the side of grace and we're going to share with the world that God loves them, period, that God only comes to them with love and grace. And it's through your giving, it's through your generosity that we're able to be that kind of church online, on campus, around the world. And so if you'd like to give, here's a couple different ways that you can do that. Uh, if you want, you can hold up the camera on your phone to that QR code, and that will give you some prompts that you can follow to give. You can text in a gift by uh, typing in this phone number, 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484. And in the message, type in how much you'd like to give and hit send. There are other ways to give as well. Jan and I give monthly through, um, it's just taken out of our bank account. There are other ways to do that. Boldrecklessgrace.org forward slash giving. Boldrecklessgrace.org forward slash giving. And over the last 16 years through so your giving, uh, we've been able to do all kinds of things in the name of Jesus, in the name of grace, uh, including building a medical clinic in Rwanda, helping our partner church in Rwanda, uh, caring for the kids here in Lake Pleasant Mobile Home Park Estates, Feed My Starving Children, all kinds of ways you've been involved. It's through your giving. So thank you so much for that. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to look at how to reset your endurance. And to get us ready for that, let's hear from the band.
2009 was going to be a huge year in the life of my family. In 2009, Jan and I were going to be celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary. I was going to be celebrating 25 years as a pastor. Our daughter Alicia was going to be graduating from law school. And our son Mike and his wife Amber were going to be having our first grandchild, who ended up being Clover, born in May of 2009. So in 2008, as I was looking forward to what was going to be that really big year, I thought it'd be great to mark all of those significant events by doing something special. So I invited my son Mike, my daughter Alicia, and her husband Corey to join me in running a half marathon, 13.1 miles, at Disneyland in September of 2009. Now, Prior to that, years earlier, I had run three marathons, 26.2 miles, and six or seven half marathons, so I knew that you had to train for something like that, that you had to get your body ready for it, you had to build up your endurance. So I gave them plenty of notice so that they could train and be ready to run that half marathon. But then life got in the way. Uh, I was at a point in my life where I couldn't run a lot anymore because of uh, what it did to my back, so I basically trained for that half marathon by riding my bike. Alicia and Corey trained, but Alicia experienced several different injuries that really hampered her training throughout that time. And Mike was going to night school, plus trying to do some work to make some money and getting ready to be a dad, so he really didn't train at all. So we got to September 2009. We were at Disneyland. We're getting ready to run the race. And so we head over. It's a six-block walk from our hotel over to the starting line. And Mike was the one who had the two quotes of the day. The first quote was this, anyone can train for and run a half marathon, but not many people can run a half marathon without training for it. And secondly, he said, I hope this isn't a bad choice. So we started the race, we all ran it, and we all finished. We were near the end, but we all finished. But Mr. I don't need to train for a marathon discovered that's not such a great philosophy for the long run, so to speak. When he got to the finish line, he basically collapsed. I thought I was going to have to carry him back to the hotel room. The race almost outlasted his endurance. Now, I'm guessing that for some of you, that's not a bad example of how you're feeling right now. We thought back in March of 2020, this pandemic was going to be a sprint. It'd be here and gone in a matter of weeks, if not a couple months turned out to be a marathon. We're still in it. And many of us feel like we've hit the wall. We're just sick of it. We're tired of it. We don't think we can go another mile. And for many of us, these last 15 months have almost come to the point where they've outlasted our endurance. Now, I first started training for my first marathon back in 1995. Uh, I was going to be turning 40 in 1997, and as I was standing on the precipice of uh, the precipice of impending old age, I decided I wanted to do something to prove to myself that I was not as old as I was getting to be. So I started training for a marathon. The marathon was going to be in uh, Walt Disney World, and I actually ran it in January of 1997, so about 11 months prior to turning 40. But as I was training for that marathon, I learned that there were a lot of things that I needed to do to build up my endurance, to build up my physical endurance, my mental endurance, my emotional endurance. And the various tips or tools that I learned for training for a marathon, I discovered actually translated well into running the marathon of life. And so I want to share some of those concepts with you today. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, we are in the fourth week of a five-week series on resetting, pushing the reset button on our lives. And so far, we've looked at how to push the reset button on our relationships, and we talked about how forgiveness is the key to that. Then we talked about resetting our emotions, and we talked about uh, inputting inspiration and downloading gratitude, and we talked about working out and resting up. And how important that is to protecting our emotions. And then last week we talked about our souls and how to keep our souls in alignment. And we do that by building healthy habits of prayer and Bible reading every day and, and worshiping. And all of the things that we've said so far in this series are ingredients to building endurance. So what I want to do is look with you at three of the key lessons I learned in training for a marathon that sort of summarize everything we've talked about so far and take us a little further down the road, so to speak, in building our endurance. 
Now, let me just say that one of the great things about the way that God created us is that the human spirit has this remarkable ability to bounce back. And even though we may feel like we're at the end of our endurance, we have this remarkable ability to rebuild our endurance. And so no matter where you are in terms of your endurance right now from this pandemic, I think you'll find some of these things helpful for you. So first of all, one of the ways that we build endurance is by building up our grace miles. Building up our grace miles. Here's what I mean by that. Uh, Mike was wrong. You can't just simply run a half marathon or a marathon without training for it. You have to build up your miles. You have to build muscle memory. You have to get your body ready for it. So when I first started running, uh, training for my first marathon, I was running four miles a day, four to five days a week. And over the course of three months, every weekend, I would extend my miles so that two weeks before the marathon, I actually ran 26 miles. And so the course of that three months, I was teaching my body to run for five hours. I was teaching my mind that I could do it. I was teaching my emotions how to make it through the times when I didn't want to keep running. And so once I got to the marathon, I built up the miles. And my body knew it was ready. My soul knew it was ready. My mind knew it was ready because I'd already done it. I built the foundation. I built up the miles. Now, when I talk about building up grace miles, I, I need to give a disclaimer. We have nothing to do with grace. Grace is a gift that God gives to you. Grace is God's choosing of you to be his son or daughter through Jesus. Grace is God claiming you. Grace is God loving you unconditionally, forgiving you. Grace is all God's work. And so when I'm talking about uh, building up our grace miles, essentially it's really an invitation just to live in that grace every day, to live in the awareness of that grace every day. Because like Mike with training for his half marathon, we can get distracted. And so we want to pay attention to our grace life. And those are the things we talked about last week, to pray regularly, to read Scripture, to worship, to serve others. Those are the things that keep us in tune with God's grace so that when we feel like we can't go on, we're reminded again and again that God has your back, that God chose you, that God is there, God will hang on to you. The prophet Isaiah says it this way, Those who trust in the Lord will become strong again. They will be like eagles that grow new feathers. They will run and not get weak. They will walk and not get tired. That's building up grace miles. It's living in the awareness that God loves you and that God is with you with, at every moment of every day. Then secondly, what we want to do is we want to fuel up our lives with hope. All right? To fuel up, or I'm sorry, to hydrate. Hydrate. I got the wrong point. To hydrate uh, your life with hope. Hydrate your life with hope. Um, one of the things, again, that I learned as I was training for this marathon is you got to drink. And you got to drink a lot of water. You got to drink a lot of uh, electrolytes. And you have to do that uh, prior to the run, during the run, and after the run. Because if you run out of water, if you dehydrate, your endurance cracks and there's nothing you can do about it. You're done. And so it's really important to learn how to drink the right things before you run, to learn how to drink during the run, and then the right things to drink after the run to recuperate. So one of the gifts that Jesus gives to us to keep us hydrated is hope. Jesus gives us hope. Hope is the gift that keeps us going. Hope is the gift that lets us know that God is there and God will meet us. Hope is the promise that life will always have the final word no matter what you're going through. So there's a story about a, a school district, and they had a policy of sending volunteer teachers into hospitals to work with kids who were going to be in the hospital for an extended period of time. And one day, there was a teacher, a young volunteer teacher, who got the call to go and work with a boy on his nouns and adverbs. Now, she had no idea why he was in the hospital. And when she walked into his room, she was shocked. This little boy had been burned over most of his body. And it was evident that he was in a lot of pain. And she could hardly bear to be in the room with him. He was in such pain, it caused her such pain. She felt like she had been a failure. So she came back the next day, and the nurse stopped her at the door. And the nurse said, what did you do to that boy? And the teacher was really frustrated, and, and she said, oh, look, I, I really blew it. I'm sorry about that. And the nurse interrupted and said, no, no. What did you do to him? We were really concerned for him. 
He'd given up. He'd lost his fight. We thought we were going to lose him. And then after you left, he started to rally. It became evident that he wanted to live again. What did you do? Well, she had no idea. So a couple of weeks later, they were finally able to ask that boy what had happened, and it was true. He had given up. He was in such pain, he'd given up. And then the teacher came. And he said, I kind of figured they wouldn't send a teacher to teach a boy his nouns and adverbs if the boy was dying, would they? And so that moment of hope that they believed that he could live gave him the endurance he needed to keep going. And that's what hope does, the hope of Jesus living in you. And then finally, the third point is to fuel up your life with joy. To fuel up your life with joy. So just like you need to hydrate your body, you need to feed your body the right kinds of things if you're going to uh, uh, build up endurance. So I had to learn what to eat before I'd run. I had to learn what to eat while I was running because I was going to run for five hours. I was not a fast marathon runner. I had to learn to eat on the run, and then I had to learn what to eat after the run, especially after the training runs, to keep my endurance strong. So fueling up was really important. Now, in Hebrews, there is a very interesting verse about Jesus and the endurance that he had as he went to the cross. And here's what the writer of Hebrews says. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God, consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. What the writer of Hebrews is saying is that Jesus endured, he kept moving because of the joy set before him. And what was the joy? I think it was you. I think Jesus was thinking about you as he made his way to the crucifixion. What his death and resurrection was going to mean for you, how it was going to change your life, how you would know once and for all that God loves you, that God forgives you, that you are God's child. It was the joy set before him, you, that enabled Jesus to endure. And joy is the gift that Jesus gives you that fuels you up so that you can endure. Joy is seeing yourself as Jesus sees you. It's seeing yourself as the one that God loves, as the one that God is for, as the one that God has claimed. When Pinocchio was first able to speak, he said to his creator, Geppetto, I'm not sure who I am, but if I'm all right with you, then I guess I'm all right with me. And that's joy. Living in the certainty, no matter what life throws your way, living in the certainty that Jesus loves you. So 2,000 years ago, Jesus made an audacious promise to you. He said that he came to give you life to the full, to give you an abundant life. He didn't promise that you wouldn't go through tough times. He didn't promise that life would always be easy. He didn't promise that life would always be fair. What Jesus promised is that no matter what life throws your way, that Jesus would be there with you to fill you with an abundance of life. And he does that by filling you with grace, with hope, and with joy. And Jesus comes to you right now to build endurance through you, in you through those gifts, through communion. And so we remember how in the night in which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body broken for you, eat this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink and said, this is my blood, it's been poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins, drink this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, as you take that wafer and as you eat it, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink the grape juice, as you drink the wine, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. 
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and fill you with endurance. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for being with us. And uh, if this service was helpful for you, I encourage you to share it. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, share it with your friends. And you just hit the share button and you put it onto your news feed. And that way more people can see it. It's a way for us to pass the grace along. And I encourage you to do that today if you found the service helpful. Next weekend, we're going to wrap up this series. And we're going to talk about how to reset your treasure. And by treasure, I mean all of those things that we think are the foundation of life. And many of us have found these last 15 months that all of the things that we've counted on sort of been taken away from us. And so what is our real treasure? How do we reset our treasure so that we're really rooted in life that holds and that lasts? So that'll be next week. We come to you every Saturday night uh, starting at 5 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube, and then it's available on demand. And then Sunday mornings, 9 and 1030, in here, in-house, in worship. We'd love to have you do either. And bring your friends. Either invite them in-house or, again, make sure that they're able to join you online. Uh, as you can see, our senior high has a great event coming up on June 11th. They're going to be having a movie night. Uh, contact Emily at youth at boldrecklessgrace.org, youth at boldrecklessgrace.org. This is for 9th through 12th graders, senior high movie night. And uh, then Vacation Bible School is just a couple weeks away now. And uh, we're doing a little hybrid approach. We're going to do uh, Zoom in the mornings. And then in the evenings, families can come back if they would like. And as families, uh, we'll have a little bit of food, and they'll be able to do their projects together. And so it's a great way for families to be involved in Vacation Bible School. And then, as you can see, we've also got our musical theater camp coming up in July. More information at boldrecklessgrace.org. That's boldrecklessgrace.org. And then uh, throughout the summer... Uh, we're going to bring back a, a thing called Ask Pastor Tim. And this is where you get to ask questions, and we use the sermon time to answer your questions. And I know there are a lot of them uh, because I'm, I'm reading them all the time, not just from you, but uh, out in culture. And so if you've got questions about faith or questions about the church or questions about life, you can email those to jeff at boldrecklessgrace.org, jeff at boldrecklessgrace.org, and he'll collect those, and occasionally throughout the summer, uh, we'll set aside the sermon time for your questions. And if you've got some friends who've been asking you some tough questions about faith, that's okay. Maybe you've got a friend who's asked you a question and you don't know how to answer it, send that along to Jeff and we'll try to tackle that for you as best we can. So ask Pastor Tim coming up this summer from time to time, Jeff at boldrecklessgrace.org if you'd like to send in those questions. All right, I think that's it. Again, thanks for joining us. And now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord always turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week.